Hello friends, my name is Dr. Saif and I am a critical care specialist. I know many of the students are facing difficulty in general medicine MCQs, especially those who are from anesthesia or pulmo background. So here I have come up with general medicine MCQs today. We will go through a few of them in uh, ID section and I am sure these MCQ will be very useful to guide um, your preparation for need super specialty critical care medicine. So this is question number one first. A 24 year old man with no past medical history is brought to the emergency department complaining of left sided chest pain for two days. He reports that the skin over his left chest is tender and swollen. He has no history of HIV risk behavior and works as a landscaper. His physical examination is notable for a heart rate of 110 beats per minute, blood pressure of 108 over 62 millimeter of mercury and temperature of 101.8 degree Fahrenheit. His ECG is normal. A NCCT scan of chest is obtained which is shown as below. Which of the following organisms is most likely causing his illness? A. Coxsackie virus A16 B. Mycobacterium tuberculosis C. Rickett C. carry D. Streptococcus pyogenes or E. Varicella zoster virus Look at the positive findings in this case. This patient has Necros necrotizing fasciitis and myonecrosis. So the diagnosis of necrotizing fasciitis is actually here there definitely and his computer tomographies can also show the same thing uh, uh, edema and inflammation of the left chest wall. So necrotizing fasciitis and myonecrosis may also be caused by infection with mixed aerobes and anaerobes. Uh, Staphylococcus aureus including MRSA and Clostridium species. So many organisms are possible to cause this kind of infection. Coxsackie virus causes vesicular lesions during acute infection. Rickettsia carry is causative agent of Rickettsial pox where you would see uh, the papular uh, uh, rash or central vesicle that evolves to form a painless blackish shark. So you would see that. And uh, in varicella zoster virus uh, infection, uh, it causes chicken pox and acute infection and zoster with reactivation. So the lesions are crusting vesicles and not the fasciitis as is in the case uh, described there, uh, described in the question. So the answer is streptococcus pyogenes because this is the most causative organism leading to necrotizing fasciitis in this case. Question number two, a 79 year old man had, has had a diabetic foot ulcer overlying his third metatarsal head for three months but has not been compliant with the physician's request to offload the affected foot. He presents with dull throbbing foot pain and subjective fevers. Examination reveals a putrid dismelling wound notable also for a pus filled 2.5 cm wide ulcer. A meter probe is used to probe the wound and it detects bone as well as a 3 cm deep cavity. Gram stain of pus shows gram positive cocci in chain, gram positive rods, gram negative diplococci, antric appearing gram negative rods, tiny pleomorphic gram negative rods and a predominance of neutrophils. Which of the following empirical antibiotic regimens is recommended while blood and drainage cultures are processed? A. Ampicillin salbactam 1.5 gram IV Q4H B. Clindamycin 600 mg POTID C. Linozolate 600 mg IV BID D. Metronazole 500 mg POQID or E. Vancomycin 1 gram IV BID In this case, the gram stain is polymicrobial and the putrid smell is very specific for anaerobic organisms. The diagnosis of acute osteomyelitis is also very likely based on the positive probe to the bone, test and white ulcer. So the broad spectrum antibiotics are indicated in this case definitely, but linozolid and vancomycin covers only MRSA and streptococcus. Okay, so uh, these are probably not uh, the uh, correct choice because they would miss the gram negative rods and anaerobic bacteria which are there in this uh, gram stain. So uh, other choices metronidazole and clindamycin uh, uh, are not tapped because metronidazole covers only anaerobes missing gram positive organisms that are key initiation of diabetic food infections 
and clindamycin covers gram positive organisms uh, including MRSC and anaerobes but misses gram negative rods which are also there in this uh, gram stain of the pus. So the app choices ampicillin cell bactem which is a broad spectrum antibiotic covers all three classes of organism except MRSC and uh, in this case probably MRSC uh, if the MRSC risk factors are present you should add vancomycin or linozolid or even daptomycin which is actually a strong consideration in this case. So the correct choice is ampicillin cell bactem or any BLBLI. Question number three. A 45 year old man with a history of alcoholism and presumed cirrhosis is brought to the emergency department by his friends complaining of two to three days of increasing lethargy and confusion. He has not consumed alcohol in past two years. He currently takes no medication and works at home as a video game designer. He has no risk factors for HIV. He was referred by his primary care physician for a liver transplant evaluation and is scheduled to begin his evaluation next month. His vital signs included blood pressure of 90 over 60 millimeter of mercury, heart rate of 105, temperature of 38.5 degrees Celsius and refractory rate of uh, 10 breaths per minute and oxygen saturation of 97% on room air. He is somnolent but is able to answer questions accurately. His skin is notable for many spider telangiectasis and palmarethma. He has a distended, diffusely tender abdomen with positive fluid wave. Paracentesis reveals slightly cloudy fluid with WBC 1000 per microliter and 40% neutrophils. Which of the following statement regarding his condition and treatment is true? A. Fever is present in more than 50% of cases. B. Initial amptic therapy should include metronidazole or clindamycin for anaerobes. C. The diagnosis of primary spontaneous bacterial peritonitis is not confirmed because the percentage of neutrophils in the peritoneal fluid is less than 50%. D. The most causative organism for his condition is enterococcus or E. The yield of peritoneal fluid cultures for diagnosis is greater than 90%. So a, a neutrophil count in peritoneal fluid of greater than 250 micro per microliter is diagnostic. There is no percentage neutrophil differential threshold given in the books. And the most common organisms are entry gram negative bacilli, but gram positive cocci are often found. Okay, so uh, enterococcus is probably not the answer and C also is ruled out. Anaerobes are more, uh, not very common in contrast to secondary uh, bacterial peritonitis and empiric antibiotic targeting them are not necessary if uh, primary bacterial peritonitis is suspected. So third generation cephalosporins or piperacillin tazobactam are reasonable initial empiric antibiotic. Diagnosis is often difficult because peritoneal culture findings are often negative. So uh, option E is also not true. The yield of weight on fluid cultures for diagnosis is greater than 90%. Actually, it is not. So, answer is A because fever is present in up to more than 80% of cases. Abdominal pain, acute onset, and peritoneal signs are often absent. So, thank you so much for your uh, interest in this video. Kindly like and subscribe and share this video with all of your friends. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.